Hey guys, how's it going? Today we're gonna to be working on two new garden experiments, both of which I hope are successful. So the first one I actually saw in the English Garden Magazine in November, and I have been waiting until now to be able to do it because I couldn't get the plants until now. So here is the magazine, November 2023. Beautiful picture on the front. And the English Garden and Victoria magazines are really the only two magazines I like to read. I think they're both beautiful. I think there's some really good ideas. And this one had one that caught my eye. I was flipping through this magazine, that picture right there caught my eye. They're grapes trained into standards or small trees in containers. I've never seen anybody do that. This whole article, it's called A Find Vintage and it's about uh, the grapevines at Hampton Court Palace. I mean, look at that, it's so beautiful. Anyway, I just thought that that was the neatest idea. So I had to wait until the garden center had some grapevines. So I picked up two red seedless grapes, a Vanessa and a Canadice. Do you have something for me? Thank you. Thanks, babe. And they are right here in these bags. There's the Canadice. They've got some big old root systems on them. But I went through, I looked at all the different grapevines and found the ones with the straightest possibilities in the way of trunks. Um, so like this one right here, we can clip this side branch off right here and then just keep training this up into you know a longer trunk. And I think we'll be able to do the same with this one. This is the Vanessa. We're gonna be potting them in these concrete containers today. So that's gonna be our first project, our first experiment. And we'll see, I mean, you guys know how fast grapes grow. It might be a nightmare sort of topiary situation or it might prove to be really easy. I did decided to do two because I thought, well, if one fails, at least I have a bad a backup of, of sorts. And this right here is experiment number two, fake boxwoods. I am not usually a faux plant fan. I think they have their time and place. Like I, I really feel like where we're gonna put these today, it is a time and place to put a faux plant. You know that we just recently had our house painted and it was in terrible shape and it's looking so good right now. And our uh, porch up by our formal front entryway, it's a wood porch and it's just so old, so, so old. And the wood isn't in the best shape. And no matter what I've tried up there, containers that have water-wise plants, self-watering containers that have, you know, the, the enclosed reservoir, we've tried just putting big saucers under the pots and we still get water everywhere on the porch and it stains and makes rings. And it's just not something that I want to fight anymore. I need to put something up there that will be nice looking. And these are the probably the best looking fake boxwoods I've ever seen. They're part of the Martha Stewart collection. I found them at Marshall's and it just stopped me in my tracks and I thought those look pretty good. Hardly anybody uses our formal front entrance anyway. So we'll only be seeing them from a distance. So we are going to spruce up these black iron urns. We're gonna clean them with the hose, let them dry. So I'm gonna do that first so they have time to dry. Then we're gonna spray them with some spray paint right here just to spruce them up a little bit. And then we are going to plant our fake boxwoods in them and set them up there on the front porch. And I think that they're gonna look nice, but you guys can be the judge of that when we're done. <laughs> and it's been a beautiful day. You can see the sun is out. It's chilly in the shade though. So I do have two layers on, but then you get really warm when you get out in the sun. Um, and Samantha and I had ballet this morning and it's just been very relaxing. And I was very excited to get back home and try these things out. So uh, step number one is to get the black iron urns clean. So let's get them out of the gator and hose them down. Okay, they've been hosed down, so I'm gonna let them sit here in the sun and dry while we work on our grape project. You can see that they're already starting to dry. They don't look too bad, but I think just a light layer of spray paint once they're dry will kind of spruce them up a little bit. Look at the size of these drain holes. Like what in, ooh, you see that spider? Yeah, look at the size of this drain hole. <laughs> so what I had done in the past, when we cleaned them out, I found these little pieces of burlap which really did help keep the soil in and still allowed water to go out. Thankfully, we don't have to worry about that with these. But I will probably still use soil to anchor these in. Those little black pots that they're in are too big to just slide right down in the urns. So I'm gonna cut them out. I have a reciprocating saw out here. We're gonna cut them out and then I'll just use soil as an anchor so maybe it will look even more real if there's soil around them. Okay, now let's get set up to get our grapes all planted. And I think what I'm gonna do is just leave them right in this area for now. Um, just so I can kind of monitor their progress. In fact, I think they might actually look pretty in between these, like the chair and the love seat right here. 
that might be nice. We'll have to move this little arrangement that Benjamin helped put together last year, but that's all right. I'm gonna gather my drip supplies for this as well, even though I'm not gonna set them up on drip today. We'll have the ability to turn drip on later, which is important. Okay, I think I've gathered up everything I need to get these grapevines planted. But while I was gathering that stuff, you fit perfectly, Samantha. <laughs> How about you, Benjamin? Yeah, look at you too. Anyway, while I was gathering this stuff, the pots had a chance to dry. So now I think what we'll do is get them painted so that they can sit here and dry again. And I just use this as a Rust-Oleum satin finish in black. Works really well. And we're gonna set them on top of this. They look nice and tidy, I love it. So we'll let them sit here and dry while we work on our grapes. So the first thing we're gonna do before we even handle our grapevines is to run our drip line. So I'm just going to pop a quarter inch drip tube up through the drain hole. It's got a nice, decent sized drain hole, not a giant one like the other pots. So we're going to leave enough of a tail, like a generous tail. You don't want it to be too short. And then we'll leave a generous tail over here on the other side. And then I think I already mentioned, I'm not going to be actually setting them up on drip today because I'm not 100% sure where these are gonna end up. I think they would look great over here, but I just wanna monitor the sun. Grapes are full sun loving plants. And uh, I think they'll get plenty of morning sun here, but I'm just gonna monitor it for a while. Once we get them, placed where we want to keep them, I can pop them into whatever drip line is near them. So it's nice to be able to do that and not have to run a cord up over the side of the container because that just doesn't look quite as nice. So that's done. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of soil. And the interesting thing about grapevine roots, like wait for it, look at this. These are two year old plants already, which is amazing. And with these, instead of planting them all straight down, we're going to do our best to spread them out in this container. Um, so I'm going to mound the soil in kind of a cone in the center here once I get it amended with our uh, starter fertilizer. And then we're going to be burying it right up to where, you know, the kind of the root flare starts right here. So we won't have very much coming up out of this pot for a while. So let's get our soil in first. Oh my goodness. Look at that, look how wet that is. But I'm not filling this container nearly as full as I typically do. Usually when I'm potting stuff, I fill it almost all the way to the top um, before adding my plants. So let me add some starter fertilizer in quick and then we will mound it up like a cone. And I don't really measure, I'm just gonna use, hold on, wait till the dust settles. I'm just using what's left over in this bag, probably like a cup and a half maybe, right there. Just gonna mix it in. Hopefully you can see that kind of cone shape. Let's test it out. See if it is at the right height here. Spread these roots out sort of around it. I think that'll work. Okay, so you can see the roots and how the soil is already kind of built up underneath, which is exactly what we want. And the top right here is about level with the top of our container. So now we can add some more soil in, just making sure to pack it fairly tight so that we don't have any air pockets and all of these roots are nicely tucked in. We also wanna make sure when we're tucking in the plant that we are getting the trunk as straight as possible, which I'm gonna to have to decide which one of these to keep as my main trunk. So that was one cubic foot of soil, so now we need to add about a half bag probably. Now that it's planted, I am going to put a stake in right here in the center, kind of the perfect height. And then I've got these soft ties right here. It's like a rubber coated wire that I'm going to use to kind of help hold this because I want to cut one of these off and train one of these to the stake, I think. So this is the hard part. 
and hopefully I'm doing the right thing here, but I'm going to cut this branch off right there. And I'm also going to cut, well, let's see, do I want to keep this one? Well, I think I want to keep this one right here. So let's cut this one off. Ooh, here it goes. Now we can train this one more straight. <laughs> this project, it's going to look like nothing for a while. Or it might surprise us. We shall see. I'm going to use several ties so that I can keep this nice and straight and sturdy. As these branches start to harden, we can remove them. Or remove the, the ties, rather. Okay. <laughs> We're done with the first one. Oh, I hope this works. The thing I've learned, though, after leaving my grapevines un checked unpruned for two years that if you don't get on it early it's really hard they stiffen so much and they expand so much at the base that there's no correcting a problem once it's kind of taken hold so hopefully by doing this more severe training pruning in the beginning uh, we will have more success with our shape later on faith in planting project okay before we move on to the canadice i wanted to talk a little bit about the vanessa uh, grape because they are really good they're like a zone five through i'm gonna say five through nine um, and they have a really sweet and fruity flavor i mean it's just a really good fresh eating grape um, and then the picture in the magazine i think those were red grapes too and they looked really pretty with the fall color of the leaves they do ripen i want to say like september and october right around that time of year they've also got a really kind of crunchy skin and it's not a slip skin like the skin stays firm so they're really pleasant texture for fresh eating and i'm very excited to have this one because when i planted mine my uh, suffolk suffolk reds is what i have out there i actually wanted vanessa's and we couldn't get them for like two years and i left that spot open and blank and then i finally decided to put the red suffolks in which they're really good as well but i was kind of hoping for this one so this is exciting to me okay let's do the second one drip first soil next and these you guys are the lemon pots from unique stone they've got a 19 inch diameter and they're about 15 inches i think 15 or 16 inches tall gotta open up a new bag of biotone mix it in and mound that soil up i think i need more soil first Now the canadice. This one's a little taller. Oh my word. Oh. <laughs> Look at the root system. Holy moly. I don't want to break it, but I want it centered. How are we going to do this? We're going to bend the roots a little bit. Please be flexible. There we go. You can see that big root right there just kind of curled around. I'm just going to have to kind of hold this one in place and hope for the best here. Wow. Of course the bags of soil weigh like 50 pounds. This is going to be our main trunk right there. I'm also reaching down in there because it was touching the side of the container and I'm tucking some soil in between the root and the side of the container. I just want soil on all sides here. I'm gonna need a tiny bit more soil. Shoot, I think I got a part bag in the greenhouse. Oh, and the soil it came in use that okay now we are going to put our stake in and now I need to do some pruning we just have to figure out how tall we want our trunk to be which I think in the end I want it to be a little bit taller than it is now so I don't want it to fork right here so I'm going to take this little one off too and this one we're going to end up with a straight stick as well Okay, <laughs> and that's why this is labeled an experiment. Here's our, <laughs> here's our finished product. Oh my goodness. Everybody say a prayer for these grapes. I'm really looking forward to seeing what they do and they are all budded up. Like there are some nice buds on each one of these plants. So we should see some growth here pretty soon. And the Canadice is fairly similar to the Vanessa. It's a little bit more tart, still very sweet. 
um, and they're a little bit more cold tolerant, so zones four through eight on this one. And if you let this one grow out and vine like, you know, normal grape vines, um, it can produce like 40 clusters of grapes per vine, which is awesome. And they ripen a little bit earlier than the Vanessa's. So I will be sharing progress updates throughout the season. And probably once they even break dormancy and start pushing leaves, I will show you what they look like. Now on to our second project. The pots are dry. I am going to again line them on the inside, this time with plastic since we don't have to worry about drainage. I want to keep every bit of soil, uh, moisture, anything that could accumulate in the pots for any reason. I want to keep it up in the pots. I don't want to have a saucer below them. I just want it to be a nice clean look. And we're going to be raising the pots up. I've got these little rubber things. They're these right here, just little rubber pieces. They're softer than a metal pot is, so they'll provide a little bit of extra like cushiony protection. Anyway, I think this should be pretty easy. I've got my reciprocating saw here as well to help cut the pots off the bottom of these. So I think it's pretty straightforward, <laughs> I think. Okay, I need to get some plastic to line. Actually, you know what? Why don't we just use this plastic? Russell, don't think I don't see you over there in the chair. There we go. Scissors. Takes every opportunity. Okay, let's do this. Perfect. I'm gonna use all this junk as filler in the bottom. For being a faux plant, that does not look too bad, honestly. And you can see there's a nice layer of soil at the top but everything's protected so nothing should come out the bottom ever and the fact that we don't have to water these should mean that everything stays clean. And it could be a situation like when you get your car detailed and you don't want anybody to eat or drink or bring anything in the car with them, like no garbage, no crumbs, nothing. We're keeping this car clean. And then over time you kind of relax and then your car ends up in the exact same state as it was before. Same situation may apply here with the house, but for now it makes me feel good to protect the paint job that we just paid to have done. This just seemed like the best way to accomplish that. Okay, let's get the second one done and then we will take them up front. It's like the dullest blade ever or what? I'm gonna change the blade out. Oh jeez, this one's in there real tight. I'm going about two miles an hour, maybe less. They look pretty back there. You ready to do some lifting? Yeah, this is a, a nice variety here. You got a good uh, winter color on it? No winter color on these. <laughs> these stayed nice and vibrant green. <laughs> so this, you guys, this porch was just Oh, it was in such bad shape. Yeah, it was. Oh, they scraped the floor and repainted and scraped all the railings. Like these were just horrific looking. There was no paint left on the top of most of this railing right here. So it's just looking so good. Hence the fake plants. Because before I had the two pots here and we had them in saucers and then there was just water lines running to where it like leveled out. And then there was a pool where it collected and there was just stains everywhere. So let's put these here and we'll adjust how we need to. Oh my goodness, you guys, they look really good up there. They're the right scale. Oh, 
And this is actually a closer view than most people get of this area of our house. I wanna say 99.9% .9 of people use a different door, um, even when we get deliveries and things like that. So I just am happy to have something green up there, living or not, living or faux. It just, it feels like such a, such a departure for me. So it's always a little bit of a weird, weird deal, but I really think that they look great. And I don't know what it is about the shape of this area right here, but I think when we get um, rain, which we got some last night and yesterday, uh, it comes off this roof here and then hits this one. And then somehow it like splatters down in a good size amounts onto the top of these railings right here. And then it also blows in, I can already see water spots, like right in here where the rain comes. I feel like I constantly need to be out here with towels sopping up water. I am gonna head to the studio though and I'm gonna grab our mat, our welcome mat. And there's the chairs that usually sit up there. Everything that was in the way of the painters just kinda got slung everywhere. I think those are the last two things I need to clean the bottom of them though. I wanna clean the feet. Uh, give him a good hose down before we put him back up on the porch. That's one nice thing. Kind of having everything upset around the house, it makes you clean, like do a deep dive on everything before you put it back, which doesn't happen all that often. We did decide we are not putting the window boxes back up around the base of the house. I'm so happy <laughs> about that decision. The only place I feel like they might end up going back up is maybe under the portico, like the balcony area. Here it is. Oop pretty monogram mat. Those window boxes were always a little bit of a struggle for me because the ones on the south side of the house got some sun, but not really enough sun to call them a full sun planter, but not enough shade to use shade plants. While the other side of the house and the east side, because it's under the balcony, always got quite a lot of shade and I always wanted everything to match. And when there's, you know, differing light, it's hard to match things and we didn't have a drip system set up to those. So we always had to hand water them and we struggled with moisture levels. They'd either dry way out or stay way too wet. So I'm thankful that that struggle will be over for a while. It will also help keep the house cleaner and the floor around the house cleaner as well. Oh, that looks so good, I love it. And no watering, yay. And you guys, that is gonna be it for our projects today, but I cannot tell you how excited I was for the grapes to arrive down at the garden center because after I saw that picture, I've just been thinking about that all winter long. So I really hope that growing the grapes as a standard works for me like it did for the people in the magazine. That picture is just so beautiful and it struck something um, in me, inspired me. So I thought that we should give it a try. And then figuring out something to kind of green up the space up there without creating a maintenance nightmare is also, it feels like, I don't know, it feels, it feels good. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. We'll give you progress reports on both of them actually. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how these hold up. They're not gonna get a whole lot of full sun, but you know how faux stuff kind of fades out over time. We'll see how long they last. Anyway, see you guys in the next video. Bye.